hours in Voyagers, an hour at two hours at the hotel and two hours coming back. This is a Coast Guard certified vessel so there's no need to wear a life jacket. This is part of an ancient 4,000 mile waterway that formed the first highway of commerce for the fur trade. Well, this is Kettle Falls Lodge, where we're going to have lunch today. Character over those years, um, and you know, again, built between 1910 and 1913. In 1918, it was bought by a man named Bob Williams, and he bought it for $1,000 and four barrels of whiskey. Uh, now, of course, this was right before Prohibition, so those became a lot more valuable right after that. Um, and I heard from this is actually another guest was telling me that uh, his, his family had, you know, married into the Williams family at one point, and that Bob Williams was a bootlegger apparently because this area was very active during Prohibition, being so close to the Canadian border. Um, and then it was actually owned by the Williams family right up until it was acquired by the park. And even after the park was established and, you know, kind of came in and, and renovated this hotel, the Williams family continued to operate it as concessionaires. And Ed Backus was, was kind of a, a lumber baron, and he had, he had a paper mill up in International Falls on the, the Rainy River, and he's the one who also constructed that dam that's up there on the Rainy River in International Falls now. Um, and that dam was there to produce hydroelectricity. Um, so the two dams that we'll, well, the one we'll see today and the one we caught a glimpse of earlier today, neither of those produces hydroelectricity. Um, now there's a couple of different stories of why he wanted to build these dams here. Some people have said it's so that he could control the water level in Rainy Lake a little bit better and produce more hydroelectricity at his dam over in International Falls. I don't know how true that is uh, because, you know, Rainy Lake's pretty big and, you know, uh, while this does change the water levels, not sure how much he could actually kind of affect the, uh, the dam production over there. Um, others have said that it's so that he could sluice logs through um, because he was, again, a lumber baron and so if you have logs that you're chopping down here instead of just the, kind of sending them down a, a big rapid in the falls, um, it's a little, maybe a little easier to kind of sluice them through these, these slots in the dam. Hey, we're heading to the dam. So it was a pretty good lunch um, at the Kettle Falls Inn. There really isn't any falls here. It's been dammed up so we're going to see the Kettle Falls Dam next. So a lot of people come up here for fishing. If you stood here uh, 200 years ago, you might have seen voyagers paddling their canoes through the waters. They muscled trade goods west from Montreal and returned with furs. Voyage depended on Native North Americans for furs and guide services, clothing, food, and medicine. handling to Rainy Lake, Minnesota. And guess what? It's raining. Why am I not surprised? Anyway, this we're going to take a ferry. It's like a, a boat um, from the National Park Service. Expecting a lot of fun today in spite of the rain. We are at uh, heading to Rainy Lake Visitor Center. They actually have four visitor centers for Voyager. And we're going on a second boat tour today for a different part of the lake. Holy moly, I 
can fit under this thing. So the Ojibwe harvested the world, bet them for the necessities of life. Animals provided uh, food and clothing, plants yielded made with syrup, berries, seeds, and wild rice. So this is the boat. We're going on a cruise today in Rainy Lake at Voyagers. Have everyone? I think so. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, um, you know, as we were coming toward this island, I asked you to think about why people might have come up to Rainy Lake City, traveled all that way to get there. And the answer has to do with this island. Does anyone have any ideas? The raspberries. The raspberries. Oh yeah. <laughs> Guess it's that. It's gold. Gold. Yes. And is that what you were gonna say too? Yeah. Okay. Great job. So yes, gold was discovered on this island. Uh, in 1893, there's a gentleman named George Davis, and he was uh, he was sent up here by another businessman. He was told to uh, uh, not come back until he found anything. So he found he eventually did find a gold vein. So yeah. <laughs> so if you're from I no, there might have been a couple people from California. You know, you might have heard of like the gold mining, the placer gold mining they did there during the uh, the gold rush in 1848, 1849. This kind of gold rush was a little bit different. So it took a lot more work to get the gold out of the rock here. Okay. Yeah, we're not just gonna hike around the island all day. And so a lot of people were drawn by that promise of gold and they were just like, you know what? Gold was discovered, let's go there. Um, and they came up to Rainy Lake City and you know built that town um, and came up here just in hopes of striking it rich. So this has some really pretty trails, prettier than the last um, tour we went on. This was a hundred foot deep wine, rock mine, hundred foot deep mine, and it's the only gold mine in Minnesota. There wasn't a lot of gold here, it was a hard work. So yeah, as you go by down here, um, you can see this, uh, it looks like kind of just a giant wheel they use to haul the ore up from those really deep mine shafts. Yeah, it's kind of uh, strange that uh, there was gold found here. Wasn't very much. But, but it might have made a few people rich. And a lot of people came here for that. Um, so once you get out to this view, as you kind of look that direction across Rainy Lake, which is actually the direction that we'll be moving after this, um, you'll see what is what is known as, um, it's a, well, it's a fault zone. So that's the reason that there is gold here but it's a fault zone. So as kind of these, the fault, the rocks moved and there were all these like little fissures in the rock that would form. And that's what allowed some mineral rich waters that might have had those flecks of gold and all of that to kind of come in and fill in those cracks. Eventually quartz formed in those cracks. And that's why we have gold here. And that's why gold is often found in this form of gold is often found along fault zones like this. selfie instructor <laughs> and that's actually a mine shaft that you can enter so it's there there was a vertical shaft but what's left is that that um, and you can see an eagle's nest at the top of that one so right up at the top there um, it's kind of on the right of the island you'll see a juvenile bald eagle in the tree there behind the branch for right now sitting there just moved its head looking at us so by now those eagles are pretty much fully grown Change in the landscape. Um, so beavers will build dams that can flood in. 
letter that an International Falls resident named Ginny Wiley wrote to President Gerald Ford in 1975. And her family had a cabin out in the, the area that was to become the park. Imagine a cabin, a really rough one, no electricity, etc. You built by yourself, bit by bit, year by year. You watched your children grow up at the cabin. So many plans, feelings, ideas, and events center themselves around this piece of land. And now suddenly, your dream is gone. The best way to visit is on a houseboat. When planning our trip to Voyagers, sea kayaking and getting a permit and making all the other arrangements felt like a formidable task. That is really why we chose to take two of the National Park tours instead. However, after we got there, we realized that you could go kayaking, you could go motorboating, or you could go houseboating out on the lakes and for camping. When it was all said and done, I wish that we had contacted outfitters and talked with them. There are lots of outfitters, and one we spoke to had found a great place where we only had to kayak for two hours. The camping spot was guaranteed, and they would make all the arrangements, and we didn't even need a permit for that particular place. So, my suggestion is, when you're planning your trip, Talk to outfitters before you decide what you want to do.